Next question. Many vets are getting out of the military and going back to college, myself included, or to college for the first time. What advice do you have? I like how you're doing sort of like the newscaster thing when you get Man, done with the question. Keeping, my, keeping it together. That's, I like man. that. I like oh. that. So you're going to college for the either back to college or you've been in the military. Okay. The number one, out of the gate, crush it. That's what you should do in college. You should crush it. You should study hard and you should crush it. Now, uh, in order to do that, you got to get a mindset. Because guess what you're going to be thinking when you get out of the military? You're going to be like, oh, this is no big deal. And right. oh, this, does, this doesn't matter. You're going to be like, hey, I was, in, I was in Iraq eight months ago. Or I was in Afghanistan six months ago. And now you're sitting here telling me to read a book and write down words on a piece of paper. This doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. That's an easy. That's an easy path to go down. Mm. It's pretty easy to say. You know why? Because it's actually true. Yeah. And what you did in combat has more gravity and more consequence than anything you're gonna do in college. And if you want to go down that path and be this stuff doesn't matter, this isn't important compared to what I've done, so I'm gonna blow it off. That's a path you can go down if you want to. I don't recommend it. What I recommend you doing is straight up crushing college. That's what I meant. recommend you doing. How do you do that? Because everybody, if you make that decision that you want to crush it, if you want to make the decision that you're going to prove to people that, you know what, yeah, I was overseas, I was in combat, now I'm coming back, and your little games that you're playing, I'm going to beat you in your own games. Yep. So how do you do that? Number one, do the reading that you get assigned. Do the assignments that you get tasked with. Do everything. Let that be your new job. These silly little games that they're playing, let that be your job. Just like I was talking about OCS. When I went to OCS, I made that like a game for me that I was going to win. So do that with college. And then on top of that, make it a game, yes, but then on top of that, as a deeper commander's intent make it that you're going to not just do well there as a game but you're going to do well so you can get smarter so you can really actually learn information that's going to make you a better person and give you better ability to dominate in the world that's what you should be doing in college now these kids that you're going to be going to college with they're not going to have this attitude they're going to be you know hey what do i need to do to get by What's Sally doing tonight? I'm more concerned about that than I am about going out, dominating this course so that I can get an A, so that I have knowledge, so I can go and crush some some vocation later on in life. So don't just do it as a game. You got to play the game a little bit. I mean, you got to, for me, I get the game mentality going, but I, the game mentality is rooted in something deeper. And what it's rooted in is gaining knowledge to be smarter and better as a human. Now, a couple things about college and the actual tactics, techniques, and procedures to dominate. Because when I went to college, I did dominate. And when I went to high school, I did not dominate. When I went to high school, I didn't care about high school. I was like, whatever. God, when can I go in the military? <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, it, when can I go now? Mm-hmm. So, but when I went to college, I had a new attitude, which was, I'm going to dominate. I'm in, I'm in a battle against these people here. I'm going to beat them. So, this is some of the things that are important. Number one, college is all about time management. Getting ahead of the curve because it's so easy. That's what happens with kids in college. That's why they don't do well because for the first time, there's no one tracking them no one's imposing discipline on them you have to have in order to do well in college you have to have self-discipline because no one's going to tell you to start that paper that's due in six weeks no one's going to tell you to start it tomorrow yeah yep, you can just blow it off you can blow it off for five and a half weeks and then you've got to write a 30 page paper in two days and it's gonna yep. and it's not going to be quality yep no one's gonna ask you have you done your homework before dinner that's or right whatever. Like, man, so man. you need to get the time management going you need to get a disciplined time management schedule you need to get ahead of the curve as early as possible right you know when you want to when a papers do a 30 page paper do you need to write it in chunks and it makes it so easy. I mean, it was a joke. When I was going to college, I would have my papers completely done like a week out. 
Yeah. Like a week out, I would be done with a 30-page paper. Yeah. And then I would just be reviewing it and getting it all completely dialed, and I'd turn it in two days early and then move on to the next one. Yep. Same thing with studying. You don't want to study. You, you do want to study hard right before the day of the test, but you want to have knowledge already absorbed in there, so you want to you want to study leading up to that. When you do reading that I talked about, highlight. Break out the highlighters. That's what I do in all these books that we're hammering through right now. You know, I always, I always send out pictures of them. They're all highlighted and marked up. That's how I'm getting the good information out of them. Mm-hmm. So highlight, and then another little trick is to make the flashcards. <laughs> I used to highlight, and then I would make flashcards about what I highlighted. Yeah. Turn everything into a question. Yep. And then you go through the flashcards, and you're going you're gonna to memorize stuff. Yep. Oh, here's a big one. This is really obvious, but guess what people don't do? Ask questions. Ask questions. I used to raise my hand. I would sit in the front row, first of all, in college. I sat in the front row. I was 20, what was I, 20? I think I was 27 or 28 years old going to college. I would sit in the front row in the little desk, and I looked like Arnold Schwarzenegger in like a little kid's all desk. I'd, then I'd raise my hand all the way up, yeah. like all the way up over my head. And they'd be looking at me, you know, because in college they kind of stop raising their hand, but I did it anyways, yeah. just to be, be you, just yeah, to be, gotcha. yeah, just just to yeah. do it. So I'd raise my and, but you ask questions because guess what? The college kids they don't ask questions, and and guess what? Adults don't ask questions. Why don't they ask questions? Because they got an ego. They don't want to look stupid. Right. Yep. I don't care. Nope. I'm here. To I win. want. I'm here to win. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, I, oh, you don't think I'm smart? Let's check out the GPA, homeboy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So ask questions. If I, and, and ask questions as soon as that, as soon as the knowledge, as soon as the understanding train starts to get derailed a little bit, ask the question right then. Maybe give it, maybe give it a minute to see if you can get it back on track by yourself. But mm-hmm. the minute you realize you're not understanding, raise your hand and say, hey, you know what, teacher? I don't understand that. Can you re-explain that? Yep. Because I'm not understanding. Yeah, you don't want to miss that train. I don't want to miss the yeah, train. You don't want it to analogy. go too far off course. Yep. And then you're just lost. Yep. So when you feel it coming off, try and catch up real quick. You know, Take a look and then just raise your hand. Put your hand all the way up in the air. Sit in the front row. Put your hand all the way up in the air and look at the teacher with, with a dead serious face. And they're going to look at you all nervous and be like, yes. Yeah, yeah. That's the only one. I went to college, they called me John. Because because that's what the attendance sheet said, because my real name is John, and that's what the sure. attendance sheet said. Mm-hmm. And so they'd, yeah, I'd, I'd be sitting there, and they'd say, uh, yes, John? <laughs> and I'd say, yeah, I don't understand that. Could you re-explain it, please? Hey, when they called you John, did that fuel the fire? No, not at all. It's It doesn't matter to me, but it's the only time, because like, I didn't know these people. Because normally, if I'm going to work with someone... Uh-huh. When I introduce myself, I'll be like, hey, my name is Jocko, because that's what everyone always calls me. Right. But these people would call my name in the attendance, and I didn't want to have this, you know. Adversarial relationship. Yes. Yeah, so oh, yes, John. That's mm-hmm. me. The other thing is, you know, do some psychological warfare. You know, I would line up my pencils. I do it on the podcast, you boy, right here. I line up pencils. It's, a, it's, a, it's also getting into character. Right, you're priming yourself. I'm priming myself. I'm looking at the teacher like, I am so ready to take yep. notes that if I have a downed pencil, it will not cost me a single letter. <laughs> I'll be back in the game. <laughs> All your contingency passes. Yeah, right contingency there. passes are standing by. And then, so sit in the front row, line up your pencils, have your notebooks ready. Personally, challenge the teacher. You want, it to, you want your personal challenge to be to pull every piece of knowledge out of them and then go beyond what they know. I was, I was, I was competing with the teachers. Yeah, I was yeah. trying to learn more than they actually knew. <laughs> and then they bring their little tests or little exams to you, and you just crush them and yeah. smash them. Now, the the thing you got to be careful of here is this can get political. Mm. This can get political, and if you start being offensive with the way you act, mm. if you start rubbing it in their face, then guess what? That can affect your grade. Yep. And part of the game here is to get a good grade. Yep. So you actually, it's a time for you to start building your relationship building skills, time to start building your leadership skills because you're going to start manipulating the teacher, mm-hmm. right? You want to make them think that you're actually super interested in the stupid crap class that they're teaching. I want them to think that. Now, now, now some classes you're going to love and they're gonna, you're going to learn a lot from. Mm-hmm. Like if you're into English... And you get to take advanced 
grammar and syntax, you're going to be sitting in there like, yes, this is rocks. But there's going to be some classes you don't want to take. But you got to get in there and make your teacher think that you're super interested and super fired up to learn that thing and that you're not just interested in the grade. But at the same time, they got to know that grade's important to you too. So you want to get along with them. And again, go into college. And if you're a veteran, you're representing all of us out there. So you should be going in there and just smashing college. And that way, we have a better reputation, not just for being tough on the battlefield, but for being smart and academically sound as well. Yeah, and, and in a way, if you go to college later, you kind of, in, in this weird way, have an advantage. Because oh, not even a weird way. You straight up have an advantage. Yeah. Especially after you've been in the military. Yeah, so much, man. Because you got the discipline. Yeah. But the only thing that'll screw you is if you have the discipline, but you don't apply it because you think, oh, this doesn't matter. Right. This is nothing compared to combat. That's yeah. what I started off by addressing. Yeah. This is important. Yeah. You just have to make it important. Yeah. And you, it, cause, okay, you pay for college. And this is the part that I think, well, I know I just couldn't connect the dots on this. Even, no matter how many people said it, I just couldn't connect the dots that you're going to college. It's worth, you know, this is, it's all up to you. These people are here to give you an education and all this stuff. You can do whatever you want to do. You don't even have to choose a major right away. You can do whatever you want to do. You're going to have the education to do it. And then to me, it just didn't register. It just seemed like the same thing as high school, except no one was monitoring your grades. <laughs> and there was a way, a, a lot more going on. So really, it was the same thing. You yeah. play football. You're one of the cool kids. There's cool parties on the, you know, and you, but the different thing, which was better than high school is you had your own place to stay. Uh, other people were staying around you that were your peers that were hanging out and didn't have to go to bed at a certain time. So if you're not that into grades and stuff in high school and you don't see that clearly, like how you would if you're like 27, 28 mm -hmm. years old coming back and seeing like pff, the real value of education in college and stuff, bro, all it's going to look like is just one big party. Yeah. Then maybe have some class or something yeah. going on during the day. I don't know. And then, they, and you make your own schedule. Mm -hmm. You're like, hey, choose this class at this time and this. And you're like, pff, you almost, it's almost like. One of the biggest tests in college is if you can pass everything that you just talked about. Yeah. If you can go and you can get the discipline, you can get the time management, you can go to the classes, you can study the stuff. That's one of the tests in college. And military personnel shouldn't fail that test. The only reason they, I'm telling you, not, not, not I'm sure there's other reasons, but definitely the, the fact that they're not taking it seriously is is what's going to cost them. Oh, like like what they've been through is like yeah. way more impactful yeah, than this way more impactful. stuff. And you know what? Doing. That's true. But yeah. again, w we're not trying to uh, we we want to win. Yeah. You know? I want you if you're a veteran and you're listening to this, I want you to dominate. Yeah. And it shouldn't even be fair. I mean, honestly, when I was going to college, it, it wasn't even fair. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because I was just ahead. I was just working, I was concentrating, I was focused. And I was making myself focus. Yeah. And yeah, Man, so that's what you got to do. I remember I had this, and you know, well, at UH, there's like, you know, there's, there's those smaller classes and there's lecture classes. So I remember in the lecture class, it was like criminology or something I happened to be taking. And there was this guy, front, he was basically you, except a real like more nerdy type guy. Mm -hmm. um, and he'd be right in the front, not like just in the front row, right here in front yeah. of the teacher. That's and there's like a projector thing that he'd kind of, he's right next to that. And man, this guy, if he had a question, boom, he was on, he would monopolize the whole class. Yeah. He didn't care. And I'm in there like, man, this guy is motivated. I don't know why Maybe this is his major, <laughs> but he is not ashamed or nothing. And so one day we had these, um, like speeches, like you, you have you to, to like read up on something and then present. Yeah. Uh, for, I don't, I don't remember I think I did it. Maybe I did it. I don't know. I forget. But I remember when it was his turn. And it's the auditorium, so you have a little mic, you know. The uh, teacher had a mic. He gives you the mic. You say your speech. So the, this it's this guy's turn to go up. And the teacher, you know, gives him the mic. He's like, I don't need that. He goes, can you guys hear me in the back? And I was like, damn, this guy <laughs> knows, you know, he's into this thing. He gives his speech, and he, had, he might as well have been the teacher, this mm -hmm. guy. And he was an older guy. He was mm -hmm. maybe, you know, I'm like 18 years old. This guy's like probably 25 or so. Maybe he was a veteran, actually. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, man, it wouldn't surprise me because this guy was there, and he was there to win. Yeah. And thinking yes. back as an older guy, um, man, 
I wish I just had that attitude. Yeah. Because I had the capability. Man, mm-hmm. the, the classes that I liked, like I, I took a, a musculoskeletal anatomy class, mm-hmm. and I got an A in that one. I think mm-hmm. I got like 97%, and I was pissed. Like, fucking not last 3%. <laughs> but so thinking like really my whole just outlook on that class, like I was there, but it was a little bit different than you. I was straight up interested in it. Yeah. No, and, and there was classes that I was straight up interested in too. You yeah. know, And those classes are easier to get through because you like them. You yeah. enjoy them. Yeah, but man, that attitude of like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna win. win. Like whatever, te- like the test was like this, almost a way to just show off how powerful I am. Yeah, like this little thing. You know? That's exactly and then what boom, I. That was it, that was know? my attitude. Man, I, you, you know, I, I one, one thing, one more thing I want to add is when I talk about concentrating and focused. I would set up the time management. You don't want to try and because I know everybody, everybody that's you know been overseas. It's like, oh, I got trouble. I have trouble concentrating, right? So, so, so what you want to do is you want to chunk down your time so you're not trying to force yourself to concentrate for six straight hours. You know, you want to, hey, I'm, I'm going to bang out an hour and a half right now and I'm going to get into this. And then I'm going to go roll jujitsu. And when I come back, I'm going to do another hour and a half. And then I'm going to do a workout. And then I'm going to come back. I'm going to do another hour. Then I'm going to hang out for a little bit, eat some dinner. And then I'm going to go and, you know, finish up and review stuff at the end of the night. So, that's this one way to overcome the attention span disorder that we all have mm. of, hey, I can't concentrate on this right now. One way to overcome that is to try and do stuff for short periods of time. Even when I was writing the book, I didn't write for 10 hours at a time. Mm. I wrote for an hour, you know, 50 minutes, but I did it every day consistently. Yeah. And that's how you... So you want to chunk this stuff down so you don't have to sit there and focus. Sometimes you have to. Yeah. But you don't want to have to sit there and and focus on something for six straight hours. Yeah. It's difficult. Yeah, man. Give and yourself I, a rest. How are you saying like... um and this comes from a lack of perspective. I mean, to not be able to do this or to choose not to do it or whatever. It comes from, again, a lack of perspective that an 18-year-old would have. But going back, how you can get smarter and understand that you're using that to be a like, more better. educated, yeah. better person. So if you're kind of, call it gamification, what you're doing. Yes. Like, I'm going to oh, make this yeah. into a game, right? So use that. Like, okay, let's say I learn about whatever X, Y, Z. I'm going to use that, what we learned today. I'm going to use that like, on a, like, back to a video game where um, you, know, you choose your guy. Or you're okay. There's this game called Super. You're gonna Sprint. try and use it in a real scenario. You're yeah, gonna but apply no, 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 no. it in real life. Yeah, yeah, fully. But um, like okay, there's this game called Super Off Road. You get a truck and you race, and if you win, you get these points to add acceleration. You get to add turbo boost. You get mm-hmm. whatever you gotta add, and you only have like, so basically you're doing that. So n- you learn X Y Z and think like boom. Now I'm now I got X Y Z in oh, my in my little brain. Saying. You know, now I can take on the world with this X Y Z I just learned. And you just keep it like that. That's actually how I feel when I read now. Knowledge like how, is power. I just learned about that. Like, boom, boom, I'm applying to. And then now I'm, when I get up or whatever, I'm like, oh, shoot, I'm kind of like an upgraded person now. Now yeah. that I know about this. That's you know? what. That's what, That's great. That's a great way of thinking about it. College should upgrade you mentally so you have more firepower to use against the yes. world. And whether that, yeah, and the and world you can or the, the next the, class. Yeah, or the next or class whatever. or whatever. Yeah, yeah man. And that lack of perspective, man, when you're 18, mm. you got parties going on, you're the, you know, you could, I think you could probably fall, fall into that too, but just less likely because after, come from the military, if you had, it's like, when you're 18, you're pressured to go to college this way. After high school, mm-hmm. everyone's talking so about So wait, what you're saying you're the military to. guys could fall into what? Like the trap of like, okay, but thinking about it, not as likely. Oh, partying? Just of like partying. Oh, and yeah, dang, of this, course this they new could. new environment oh, is just yeah. like so seductive, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Because these military guys, they're going to have the GI Bill. Right, they're right. like rolled. They got a nice car. Everyone yep. else is struggling students, and they're pretty much set. Right, popular. And all of a sudden, they're like, oh, yeah, well, you know, they know about the world. They've been around the world. They know how to drink, and they know how to party really well. <laughs> and so they can yeah. take a leadership role in partying with other people, and yeah. they can have a great time. Yep. And that's cool, but make sure you don't – make sure you upgrade your – your truck yeah while you're there too <laughs> yeah so so you're more likely when especially when you make the decision kind of on your own to go back yeah like like i said when you're 18 coming out of high school everyone's talking to your parents are talking about it most likely kids around you're like hey i got into this college right? and if you're the guy who's not going to college <laughs> unless you have some cool other cool plan or whatever um, unless unless you just join the military Right, but that's like another thing, yeah. you know. Like they went to the military, but what are you doing? And you're like, I better go to college then, yeah. you know, unless you're going to. The... So you kind of go because you're expected to go, but you don't have that clarity. Like, 
if you go back, go back mm. later. Like some people nowadays, it's popular to. Well, I, the I do world. think though a lot of military guys that once they're getting out, people say, well, "What are you going to do now?" Oh, and yeah. they go, okay. they go, uh, well, I'm going to go to college. I'm going to use my GI Bill. And they go, okay. Yeah, but see? they're going without a without a focus and without a plan. So yeah. the military guys can fall into that trap as right. well. And that's why I'm hoping that they're listening to this going, hey, you know what? Absolutely. Take advantage of the fact that you're with a bunch of people and you can hang out and you can party and have a good time. But have the discipline that you win. Yeah. None of it matters. That partying doesn't mean anything if you don't win every day and make yourself better and come out of there with the ability now to set yourself up for a good life because that's yeah. what college is supposed to do. It's yeah. supposed to give you opportunity. Yeah. That's what you want is opportunities that you can take advantage of it. Man, it's so true, man. It's like I, I'm thinking back to any party hangout situation is not serving me at all right now. No. At all. No. Not one. And I think that was like, that's what really got in the way. I think, and not <laughs> partying like I was in this big partier because yeah. it wasn't the case. But it was it's just, just there. The social scene just pulled had way more of a draw than making it to class. Of course, you know, you're a human being. You like social activity. Most human beings like that. Yeah, man. Not all of us can sit around and be like, no, I do not negative want to speak to other people. I, if I went, if I went back to college for, for, you know, if I found myself in that situation. Bro, it'd be just like how you said. You bring your A game. I bring my A every single day. I wouldn't, literally, it'd be, you know how like when you train for a tournament? Yeah. You know, and you're, and you're just like, hard. yeah, guys are going, that's the last thing I want to do. I want to eat right now. I want to rest and I can't wait to get back to training so I can learn some new stuff, get in better shape, you know, so it's like mm-hmm. laser focus, focus, you know? Yeah. And even if it's not like focusing on the goal the whole time, you're focusing on winning that day mm-hmm. and winning the next day, winning this week, you know? Man, that that's a valuable tool, man. Valuable advice as well. Dig it.